Okay, we have our guest speaker who is from 350 Massachusetts, a statewide grassroots uh, member-led campaign, campaign something, network <laughs> committed to a just transition to a climate free, safe world. Thank you for coming. I didn't get your name here, just all this stuff. Shall I come up to the podium and Please. be official here? Or? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. And uh, does this, is this microphone working? Nope. Okay, so I'll put this one here. Okay, and that is not else. Okay, all right. So I hope people can hear me. Um, so, uh, so um, thank you all for coming out and for having me. Uh, my name is Rand Barthel, and I live in Menden. Uh, I am. Uh, I have been since 2013 active in 350 Massachusetts. Uh, which is an, uh, an organization of volunteers that advocates for, um, <clears throat> for policies to combat climate change. Um, uh, during the 10 years I've been involved, I've, my wife Carolyn and I have started two local chapters of 350 Massachusetts. Uh, and she's currently involved in the, leader, in the statewide leadership of the organization. I'm also uh, a, an essentially almost lifelong Democrat and uh, active member of the Menden Democratic Town Committee since probably the early 2000 and aughts. Um, and uh, I uh, retired last year from a career in software development. Um, and I have my educational background is in physics and astronomy and things like that. So what is 350 Massachusetts? Well, um, it's a statewide grassroots citizen-led nonpartisan organization. So I've got my 350 hat on tonight, not my democratic hat, um, of activists working for, for policies to confront the climate crisis at the state and local levels. And I'm gonna assume for this discussion that I don't have to convince any of you that the climate crisis is real uh, that it's caused primarily by human activity, chiefly the emission of fossil fuels, of, of carbon dioxide by burning fossil fuels, and that it uh, poses a serious threat to the future quality of life on the planet if we don't address it. Uh, so if you're not on board with any of that, let's talk afterwards. Uh, um, so the 350 in 350 Massachusetts refers to 350 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which um, uh, climate scientists used to think back when we adopted this, this uh, name would be a safe level of carbon in the atmosphere, a sustainable level, if we could get back down to it. Um, today, the level is 420 parts per million and rising. And uh, so, um, all right. So, uh, so how do we, so 350 Massachusetts works to end fossil, dependent, fuel, fossil fuel dependency in the state and achieve a just transmission, transition to a future powered by clean energy. Uh, we work both to stop bad things to ha from happening like new fossil fuel infrastructure uh, and to promote good things to happen like offshore wind and solar, uh, adoption of of heat pumps and EVs and, and uh, geothermal um, energy and that kind of thing. Um, uh, 350 Mass is organized into local chapters, which we call nodes. Um, and there are currently 17 nodes across the state. Um, I'm active in the Greater Franklin Node, which uh, Carolyn and I founded uh, back in 2015. Uh, with the primary goal of combating a large gas pipeline that was planned to be brought through the Franklin uh, area uh, over going east to Canton. And that pipeline eventually didn't happen because the Supreme Judicial Court ruled that the funding mechanism that they had proposed for it was illegal. Um, so, um, so, 350 Mass nodes work on local projects uh, within their towns or their regions and also act as um, 
conduits for information about what's going on statewide uh, in the climate movement. So, uh, so how do we work on the problem? Well, um, to change everything, we need everybody. And the climate problem is so big that there are ways for people, you know, whatever your inclinations or abilities or passions uh, uh, are, there's a way for you to plug in. And uh, so uh, we have it's everything from people. Some people like to hold signs. Some people like to um, uh, lobby their legislators. Some people like to, um, if you can imagine it, put on business suits and go into boardrooms and explain that cooking the planet is not a good business model. Uh, so there's room for everybody to play in this space. Uh, so some of the things we do, there are public rallies and protests. We recently had a Stop the Dirty Banks protest in downtown Boston in um, uh, downtown Crossing, where we dramatized the fact that the major banks are all funding fossil fuel projects like pipelines and oil fields and exploiting the Arctic and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and so we, uh, we were promoting people to, uh, to take their money out of those banks and invest in local community banks and credit unions instead. Uh, so we do th that kind of direct action. We also lobby the legislature. Um, and uh, uh, often a lot of that work is done uh, through coalitions that we're a member of. The, the biggest coalition and the most active one is the MAP. Hope anybody. <laughs> All right, we'll 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 keep going. Um, at the local level, we work for local policies. Like uh, examples of that would be zero emission building codes, so that future buildings will not emit carbon into the atmosphere, uh, or you know ordinance, ordinances regarding um, regarding solar panels, uh, or um, uh, in some cases, some towns are working to not allow future buildings to use natural gas. Um, and uh, uh, also, um, uh, um, so every two years, um, 350 Mass goes through an extent, an intensive and very thoughtful and very ground up democratic process where we select our campaigns for the next two years. And this more or less corresponds to the, the two-year cycle that the Massachusetts legislature had. Um, and uh, so we recently uh, completed that back at the beginning of March. Uh, and so for the next two years, the, the, the statewide campaigns that we have uh, are going to focus on um, uh, uh, one campaign is um, emissions-free building, which is, which is um, figuring out how we're going to retrofit billion uh, buildings, literally a million buildings in Massachusetts, to um, uh, to you to to instead of getting their heat from burning carbon fuels, uh, get it instead by uh, using heat pumps and geothermal and and other new technologies, and this is a this is a huge, uh, just the, I mean the scale of this is absolutely stupendous when you start to think about what is going to be required and how many people are going to be need needing to be employed in doing the work. Um, the other campaign um, is called polluters pay. Uh, Massachusetts is one of four states that has been chosen by the Rockefeller Family Foundation. And this is really ironic because, of course, the Rockefellers made their money in oil. <laughs> but the Rockefeller Fam Family Foundation um, uh, has picked four states, Massachusetts is one of them, 
to, um, uh, for a campaign to pass legislation to require 20 of the top carbon polluting uh, uh, corporations to pay into a climate super fund that would be used to, uh, to finance climate adaptation projects. So, so that's projects to make our towns and communities and coastlines resilient in the face of, uh, of the consequences of climate change as weather becomes more extreme and the sea level rises and all these things. There are going to be a, there's going to be a need to uh, uh, harden up our infrastructure and provide um, ways for people to get shelter in emergencies. And there's a whole lot of work to be done in preparing ourselves for the consequences of the climate change we've already signed up for. Because, because you know, a certain amount of climate change is going to be caused and has already been caused by the car carbon dioxide that's already in the atmosphere. And so, so, um, so 350 Massachusetts has been chosen to spearhead this campaign in Massachusetts. Uh, the other states involved are New York, Vermont, and Maryland. Uh, and there's, a, there's also a, uh, there is legislation in Congress to, uh, to do the same thing at the federal level. Right now, the outlook in Congress obviously is not all that great. Um, so, you know, a, a question would be, uh, how could the Mansfield Democratic Town Committee or its members as individuals plug into what we're doing or get involved in some way? So you can kind of break that down into what you can do as an individual, what you can do at the town level, what you can do at the state level, and then there's also what you can do in your unique role as a Democratic Town Committee. And so uh, at the personal level, um, you know, you can certainly work on your, your own personal carbon emissions by uh, adopting technologies like, like solar panels, heat pumps, electric vehicles. Um, and the, also, there are, there are less glamorous things you can do, like beefing up the insulation of your house. And, and, and there are things you can do. Um, and there are uh, lots of, um, of uh, tax credits and uh, rebates available, both from the federal government and from the Commonwealth, that can make it more affordable to do these things and you can end up saving money doing it at the same time. So that's kind of the things you can do at the personal level. Uh, at the town level, there are, there are a number of things that, that the town of Mansfield could be, could be doing. Um, the, uh, Mansfield became a green community, I believe it, believe it was last summer, uh, and got a grant from the Green Communities Act for $165,000 to put LED lighting and other energy efficiency measures in place in its municipal buildings. Um, and there are uh, probably a lot of other projects of that sort that Mansfield could get funding for uh, through the Green Communities Act. Uh, and that's something that, that uh, individuals here or possibly the Democratic Town Committee could advocate for. Um, uh, another thing that, that you could do at the town level would be to adopt um, a net zero building code. Man Mansfield already adopted a stretch code, uh, which makes new buildings uh, more energy efficient. Uh, and you could, there is another step beyond what you did that you could do. Uh, that would basically commit to reaching a goal of new buildings will be built in, a, in such a way uh, that they don't emit uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Uh, and it is important to make sure that new buildings not be carbon emitting. change. So, so that's the, the, the town, some other ideas. Let's see, what have I got here? Um, so I mentioned that. 
um, uh, some towns are passing uh, ordinances that, that require uh, solar panels to be installed on the roofs of new buildings uh, above a certain size or meeting a certain description. That's another thing that, that some towns are working on that some 350 Massachusetts nodes in other parts of the state have, have contributed to. At the state level, uh, um, work with your legislators. Um, we, I found out that um, you have uh, you have Adam Scanlon and Paul Feeney um, uh, in the legislature. Um, Paul Feeney uh, is your senator, and we have in 350 have a good feeling about him. He he is he has been helpful and supportive, and so he needs to get a pat on the back for that, and uh, and needs to be encouraged to do more. Uh, and I don't know what Adam Scanlon's record, record on climate issue is, issues is, but um, certainly one avenue that you, that you all could uh, do would be to um, uh, talk to him uh, and see what he's up, up to. Um, and then, let me get back to the back page here. Um, so the thing is, there's, there is a lot of... Massachusetts in the last couple of, of legislative sessions has passed some really um, groundbreaking uh, legislation that that puts us on a roadmap to as a state to net zero emissions by 2050, which is the target we need to have. Now we need enabling and implementation legislation to um, to put programs in place to make this happen and to also reform the uh, grant the uh, agencies within the state government that uh, have in the past stood in the way of this kind of thing. And I'm thinking here about the Department of Public Utilities and the Department of um, Energy of uh, Environment Resources, DOER. Uh, there are institutions in Massachusetts that were founded many, many decades ago whose legal mandates do not say anything about climate change and, and therefore they continue to operate according to rules that they established a long time ago, and uh, and all of that needs to be shaken up. And uh, so that's something the legislature can do, and and we're we're hoping to, we're we're hopeful that Governor Healy will do some of that also. Um, so uh, another thing you can do, come check us out. Uh, you know, we would love to have more people playing in our sandbox, and. Uh, uh, and if you come to some of our meetings, you'll learn a whole lot about climate change and, uh, uh, and green energy. Um, the great, greater Franklin, Fran um, the greater Franklin node, let's try that again, uh, meets <coughs> on the first and third Thursdays of every month, uh, seven to 9 PM. Uh, the, the, the first Thursday meetings, uh, as of the last meeting, uh, are, um, are hybrid, and uh, and the in-person part of it is at the First Universalist Society Franklin, which is at 262 Chestnut Street. Uh, the third, yeah, I've got a piece of paper that I will leave with you. And the the third Thursday meetings are um, are all remote on Zoom, so, um, and that's basically uh, um, what I've got to say. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? Oh, yeah, hi. What? Oh. Thank you very much for coming. I see on your legislative initiatives um, that there's a bill to electrify the MBTA a commuter rail. That would be fabulous. Yeah, um, uh, certainly. The MBTA is obviously essential infrastructure that needs to be fixed, capital F, <laughs> and also needs to be all electric so it won't dump diesel pollution uh, into people's environments and contribute to the climate problem. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure. The, um, the, uh, the 350 mass is decided that you know, we make a distinction between issues that we support and issues that we intend to lead on. 
you know, as an organization, you have to kind of decide how you're going to distribute your resources. And, uh, and we did decide uh, to lean on the buildings issue rather than the, uh, than the uh, transportation issue uh, in, uh, in, these, in, in our statewide campaigns. However, there is a transportation working group within 350 Mass that is continuing to, um, to push this. Uh, so it hasn't gone away, you know, it's, 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 and um, uh, it's important. Yeah. Well, only because um, the Acela train runs right through Mansfield and it's already, you know, electrified. And we have a commuter rail going right through our town as well. So that might be something we could. So, so diesel fuel is being burned to move the train, the commuter train through, even though the whole thing is electrified. The, the line is, yeah. So, other questions? Thanks, Rand. Thank you. I, it, it's very apparent you did a lot of research for tonight. So, so we greatly appreciate that. And thanks for what you do on what 350 does. There's also two other reps you mentioned, Adam Scanlon. Mansfield is split. Uh, another Democrat, Ted Phillips, and then Republican Jay Barrows. I was wondering if you have any insight into them at all or okay. We are kind of blessed in Franklin to have Jeff Roy as our state representative. He is he he chairs a he co-chairs a crucial committee that is kind of like Grand Central Station for all climate legislation, the Transportation, Utilities, and Energy Committee, and he's the House co-chair of that. And so, you know, the care and feeding of Jeff Roy has been a uh, a focus of our node. Yes. Thank you for coming. Oh, okay. I'm just curious why you call your chapters no, nodes. I think the idea was, you know, a, a lot of there are a lot of um, there are a lot of young, high techish kind of people in the movement as long as, and I think that the idea nodes in a in a in a computer network are are are. Um, are co-equal, they are peer to peer. They are not, no one is in charge of any of the other ones. And, you know, and, and the, the whole of the internet was engineered that way because it started out as a, a means to connect computers in government weapons labs. And they didn't, they wanted the system to go on working even if one site was knocked out. Uh, that's how we got the internet. Okay, all right, are we all set? Thank you, thank, thank you.